Hello, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Welcome to our channel, Deep Dive Defense. Over here we take a deep look from unusual angles, which may challenge your mind. So let's dive right in. Iran's Shahed-136 drone has gained worldwide recognition, particularly due to its use by Russia against Ukraine. This one-way attack drone, developed by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Aerospace Forces Self-Sufficiency Jihad Organization's Shahed Industries, has become widely known by now. It's comparable to a cruise missile in its way of operation, just three to four times slower, with smaller warhead, but comes at a friction of the price. The Shahed-136 follows its predecessor, the Shahed-131, which is a smaller variant with less range and payload. The development of this class of drones can be traced back to the Cold War era, with an intermediate step that inspired the IRGC Aerospace Force being the Israeli Harpy drone from the 1990s. But the roots are in the 1980s, when two German-American collaborative efforts aimed to develop an anti-radar drone, known as the DAR, were meant to efficiently counter radar systems and surface-to-air missile sites of the Soviets, their allies. The challenging conditions of that era necessitated effective solutions that could be scaled up in quantity. However, the collapse of the Soviet Union halted the evolution of these piston and wankel engine-driven propeller drones with their distinct delta wing shape. Israel then adopted and continued the development, resulting in the Harpy drone, primarily for use against the Syrian air defense system. It remains unclear whether Israel operated a Harpy near or inside Iran, leading to the recovery of wreckage by Iran, or if Iran simply copied the concept from the Israelis or Germans to create the Shahed-131. Certainly the miniaturization and ever-decreasing costs for avionics was a key driver for Iran to pursue such concepts. Iran's recovery of the wreckage of a small Hermes-type Israeli drone around the mid-2000s, and the development of the Shahed-123, had provided Iran with all necessary subsystem technology. The smaller Shahed-131 first appeared in a blurry photo in 2014 and again during the 2019 strikes on Saudi Aramco oil infrastructure, where it showed its impressive capabilities. The larger variant, the Shahed-136, later surfaced in Yemen, used by Ansarallah against Saudi Arabia. The significant breakthrough of the Shahed-136 lies in its capability to reach targets up to 2,500 kilometers away nearing to what can be described as strategic level range performance. Although its warhead is comparatively small, weighing 40 to 50 kilograms, it is still quite effective against smaller and soft targets. The primary warhead option includes a smaller precursor explosively formed penetrator warhead positioned in front of the main warhead. This precursor warhead is designed to create an initial hole into harder targets, allowing the main conic shaped warhead to penetrate and cause more damage. To achieve such reach and damage with such a small, compact weapon, one compromise had to be made, accepting a slow cruise speed of around 160 km per hour. This limitation is mitigated by reducing the radar and thermal signature to avoid detection. The drone's radar cross-section is minimized using a sandwiched composite airframe with a honeycomb structure, which stiffens the design and absorbs radar signals. This structure consists of a carbon fiber film, the honeycomb core, and another carbon fiber film on the opposite side, significantly reducing radar returns around the X-band range used for engaging. Its blended wing delta shape with fully composite vertical stabilizators is also optimized to lower its radar wave reflection properties towards the threat emitter. Its low radar signature and physical size, putting it into the low observables or stealth category, means the drone's slow speed is somewhat compensated and overall survivability improved. To further improve the penetration capability of the Shahed-136 into adversary airspace, defended by ground-based air defense systems, the flight pattern was selected to be low-level terrain masking. While this approach means that the drone comes within range of anti-aircraft artillery, aided by its relative loud acoustic signature, it also means that it can fly below the line of sight of long-range SAM systems. This fact forces the adversary to create a new class of air defense made up by widespread and dense deployment of anti-aircraft artillery, or even simple machine guns, to enable engagement. This binds larger amounts of resources, just to counter one class of threat, mostly ineffective against other airborne threat types. Here the vast range performance of the Shahed-136 allows it to circumvent and avoid concentrations of defenses, 
which in turn forces the opponent to deploy those defenses even denser and far from the front lines, in rear areas. Another trade-off for this lightweight design is reliance on satellite navigation services. Initially, a simple single antenna satellite navigation receiver was used, which was later replaced by a CRPA array of four or more antennas to reject interference from GPS or GLONASS jammers. This system can identify the directions of jamming sources and adjust the array to receive true satellite signals by nulling the jamming direction. The necessity of such navigation hardening was highlighted during Iran's 2024 strikes on Israel, where intensive jamming and spoofing of satellite navigation signals were prevalent. This technique has proven effective in Ukraine to a notable extent, also due to the vast frontline length difficult to cover with jamming. When reduced range is acceptable for an operation, the Shahed-136 can be equipped with a nose-mounted imaging seeker which may also be capable of performing DSMAC terrain correlation to determine its position, without relying on satellite navigation. Among the most impressive feature of the Shahed-136 is its low cost, estimated at between ten dollars to $20,000 per unit. This makes it comparable to decoy target drones, but with an added secondary precision strike capability. The cost of intercepting a Shahed-136 often involves weapons several times more expensive than the drone itself, leading to an extremely unfavorable cost exchange ratio for the side using expensive interceptor missiles. The drone's basic design is already inexpensive, and costs are further reduced by using commercial off-the-shelf equipment, primarily chips and electronics, which Iran locally integrates into the drone's avionics suite. Its propulsion is driven by a small, low-cost four-cylinder aviation motor, also produced locally. Russia has used the Shahed-136 to target Ukraine's critical infrastructure, depleting Ukraine's stockpiles of Soviet-era surface-to-air missiles. The importance of the depletion of the missiles for S-300P, and especially Buk M1 for targeting Shahed-136, is often not fully realized. Ukraine's Soviet-era air defense was one of its top military capabilities, the most potent SAM system structure of all European militaries. Today Ukraine relies heavily on Western deliveries for surface-to-air missiles, many of which have been used to intercept Shahed-136 drones, now locally produced by Russia under the name Jiran. In Iranian service, the Shahed-136 has been deployed indirectly against regional adversaries, groups, and even moving ships in the Indian Ocean, which necessitated a different guidance system than the one used against Ukraine. During Operation True Promise in April 2024, Iran's most significant use of the Shahed-136 involved launching approximately 160 of these one-way attack drones against Israel. The drone's slow initial flight over Iraq served as a warning of the incoming strike hours before reaching targets in Israel. The primary goal was to force Israel to commit its conventional air power assets to counter the threat. Israel had already begun intense satellite navigation system jamming and spoofing throughout the region before the launch of the drones, but this was not sufficient to make sure that the drones would be effectively neutralized. Consequently, supersonic fighter jets, including F-16s, F-15s, and F-35s from several allied nations, were deployed to hunt the drones. This scenario benefited Iran, as it forced Israeli air power to remain active following subsequent strikes on the airbases with ballistic missiles, demonstrating Iran's capabilities. Overall, slow, low-signature one-way attack drones, like the Shahed-136 force opponents, to allocate and commit resources to counter them. Similar to cruise missiles, their large range and low signature utilizing low-altitude terrain masking allow them to approach from any direction, often with low prior warning time. While Israel may have the capacity to counter 160 approaching Shahed-136 drones simultaneously, not many nations possess the advanced air power assets that Israel and its allies have. The Shahed-136 can be held back until the enemy's major air defense assets are sufficiently degraded, allowing for precision attacks on intended targets. In summary, the Shahed-136 serves multiple roles for Iran. It is a low-signature asset, capable of being launched from a pickup truck, to execute surprise attacks on targets. Additionally, it forces adversary air power to commit resources to intercept it, thus keeping enemy forces occupied. It also forces the opponent to set up point defense systems around the country, which depending on the size, can bind vast amounts of resources. 
Furthermore, it functions as a precision strike weapon with an extensive range of 2,500 kilometers, capable of inflicting significant damage on non-hardened targets. Despite its capabilities, the Shahed-136 is inexpensive and relatively easy to produce, and could even be described as a target drone with secondary strike capability. By now, it has grown into a whole family of variants, including the jet-powered Shahed-238, which will be topics of separate discussions. Shahed-136 truly represents a revolutionary weapon advancement that Iran has innovated and which will inevitably proliferate among the world's militaries. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and like our work, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. We will try our best to answer your comments. Your support would be greatly appreciated and motivates to produce more content in the future. Thank you, and have a great day.